Scholars and scientists now concede that Africa is the birthplace of mankind. Africans were the first builders of civilization. They discovered mathematics, invented writing, developed sciences, engineering, medicine, religion, fine arts, and built the Great Pyramids, an architectural achievement which still baffles modern science. And what we're doing is carrying on a sacred mission. You understand that, don't you? That this is a sacred mission. This is not anything to take lightly. This is something that we are trying to use to rehabilitate our lives and our people. Our history is our badge of honor. And all strong people emphasize their history all the time. Weak people do not. It was quite clear that the black people in America seemed to be generally unaware that they had a history. Not a single book on Africa did I see before I was 20, not a single book. In all of the programs that I attended, all of the education that I had, college, public, and otherwise, nobody ever told me that I was an African woman. Nobody ever told me what the history of African people were. Nobody ever told me that America is business and without business you will have nothing and be nothing. And nobody ever told me how to organize business so that I would be able to develop institutions in my own community. Listen carefully. Do not confuse modern Egypt with ancient Egypt. These are two totally different worlds. Here we are in America, and it would be very difficult to find an American in this room. We call ourselves Americans because we are in America, we are American citizens. But there are African people here, European people perhaps, Asian people, but no Americans. I am part American, I am part Makusi Indian, I am part African, but it would be difficult to find an American audience that is pure American. That's why Egypt, do you go to Egypt? And you said, the Arab is not an Egyptian. The people who built the pyramids were not Arabs. I know, man, because I am responsible for returning to the bloody Arabs, the splinters of the Sphinx's nose and chin, and the Arabs do not want to remake it because it looks Negro. What did you find out about ancient African civilizations? Well, to begin with, I found out that... Uh uh, ancient African civilization was, first of all, the beginning of civilization. I found out that there could be no uh, record found anywhere that antedates the advanced civilization of Africa. Now, I found out that uh, the Greeks, who were supposed to have been the founders, of civilization because they were the first civilized white folks. But the Greeks got their civilization from the Egyptians. And the Egyptians were black people. And the Greeks passed their civilization on to the Romans. And the Romans are a very stupid, dumb bunch of people for the most part. They couldn't retain it. They lost it. They had a dark age in, in, in Europe for 500 years. And then another bunch of Africans, the Moors, from North Africa moved into Spain and started civilization all over again. So instead of Europe civilizing Africa, Africa has civilized Europe two times. Is there any, any question about the fact that uh, the first human life occurred in Africa? Is that incontestable? To date, the oldest human find has been in Africa. They have not a damn thing to do with the building of the pyramids. We now have hard proof, very hard proof, that Egypt was African when the pyramids were built. The Greeks don't have a language and they don't have an alphabet. The Greek alphabet is an Egyptian alphabet that came from the Ethiopian alphabet. The Rosetta Stone the Rosetta Stone was a stone found, they say, in a place called Rosetta. In the top, it had hieroglyphs. In the middle, it had what they say, some people say demotic, some say erratic, or whatever it is, it was another form of writing of the ancient comedic legacy. The third, they say, was classical Greek. 
The third was not classical Greek. It was the African script that the Greeks could understand. I'm not the first person to suggest there were Africans in America before Columbus. Christopher Columbus is the first person to say that. He actually says in the journal of the second voyage that when he was in Haiti, Native Americans came to them and told them that black-skinned people had come from the south and southeast trading in gold-tipped metal spears. I appeared before Congress on July the 7th, 1987. I'd been summoned there to give due cause why I should not they should not refer to Columbus's accidental stumble into the Caribbean, which he thought was the backside of India, as a discovery. I remember when I entered the chamber, this gentleman, head of the Quince Centenary Commission, came up to me and said, you don't mean to say you come here to say Columbus did not discover America? I said, yes. He said, you must be mad. I said, you look mad to me too. <laughs> as a result of my presentation, Congress decided to delete the word discovery from official documents. You heard Professor Ben raise the question of the Holocaust, which seems uh, of a Holocaust, an African Holocaust. Seldom is that word used in that particular context. We've only heard Holocaust used in a particular uh, context. Maybe we can ex amplify on that. Well, our Holocaust started 500 years ago, and it's not over yet. See, when we talk about mm -hmm. our Holocaust, our casualties would exceed a hundred million people, far exceed a hundred million people. No people in the history of the world ever sustained such a loss and stayed alive. Are white people inherently evil? Are white people inherently evil? With the demise of Hannibal, what happened? That's when With the, the invasion... demise of Hannibal, the Romans came aggressively, destroyed the city of Carthage brick by brick. And this was the beginning of European aggression in Africa and European aggression in the rest of the world. And I maintain that the total relationship of Europe to non-European people from that day to the present day has been negative. White people don't deal with the fact that they are the ones who are sicker than anybody else in this particular issue. Which is why when you deal with the question of race, you cannot deal with what's wrong with these African people. See, the thing that happened in South Central started with a malady in the justice system where white people could not see white men who had did something against black men and penalize them for what everybody in this country knows that they did. So the problem of white racism is that we don't look in depth and do these little documentaries on white people and what's wrong with them. Are white people inherently evil? Are white people inherently evil. No, I don't think it's no. a question of humanity. I do not believe in theories of people being more human than others. I do believe, however, and the evidence bears us out, that whereas the Africans had the opportunities to destroy European civilizations, whenever they invaded Europe, whether it was under the Grimaldis before the emergence of Cro-Magnon Man, whether it was under the Moors, when with other peoples they were in Egypt, they were in Europe, whether it was under Hannibal, when even Tahaka made a, an excursion into a part of Europe, they found them in Spain, the, the European profited in all the circumstances. Never was his civilization shattered. Whereas when the Europeans invaded, they wiped out cultures. Uh, one white man named Lincoln uh, supposedly fought the Civil War to solve the race problem, and the problem is still here. Another white man named Lincoln, again the same white man, issued the Emancipation Proclamation to solve the race problem, and the problem is still here. Some more white liberals came along with the 13th, 14th, and 5th Amendments, which were, which were supposed to solve the race problem, and the problem is still here. Uh, nine years ago, nine more white liberals, so-called, came up with what they call a Supreme Court desegregation decision, and the problem is still here. And then another white man named Kennedy came came along running for president and told Negroes what all he was going to do for them if they voted for him and they voted for him 80 percent. He's been in office now for three years and the problem is still here. When the police dogs were biting uh, black women and black children and black babies in Birmingham, Alabama, that Kennedy talked about what he couldn't do because no federal law had been in, uh, violated. And as soon as the Negroes exploded and began to protect themselves and got the best of the crackers in Birmingham, then Kennedy sent for the troops. And there was no, he, uh, he, used, he didn't have any new law. Oh.
When he sent for the troops when the Negroes erupted, than he had at the time when whites were erupting. So we are within our rights and with justice, with justification, when we uh, express doubt concerning the ability of the white man to solve our problem and also when we express doubt concerning his integrity, concerning his, his sincerity. Because you will have to confess that the problem has been around here for a long time and whites have been saying the same thing about it for the past hundred years and there's no nearer solution to date than there was a hundred years ago. If I had my way, I'd have been a killer. Okay? That's true. I would have had guns and I would have gone to the south and gave them violence and violence Shotgun to shotgun, if I had my way. We gave this country her culture. We gave this country her music. We gave this country her margin of profit with the agricultural revolution, though we never got our 40 acres and a mule. I'll be doggone if I'm walking away from four centuries of investment in this country. We, too, are entitled to a piece of the rock. Uh, if we want to survive, we can't afford to lose. Which means that the black man should have a hand in controlling the economy of the so-called Negro community. He should be developing the type of knowledge that will enable him to own and operate the businesses and thereby be able to create employment for his own people, for his own kind. If we fail in this mission, we will have to put down the sun from our shoulders and the world will be in darkness.